Welcome to part 3 of 2D Polyline Utilities in Carlson 2012. In this last part, we're going to cover the final two sections of the Polyline Utilities that are listed under the Edit menu. We'll be looking at options under Remove Polyline and Check Polylines. To start with, we want to look at Remove Duplicate Polylines. What this command will do is actually eliminate duplicates. So I'm going to do a little cleanup here. We'll get rid of that line. And then I'm going to deliberately copy this line on top of itself several times. Now we'll use the Polyline Utilities Remove Duplicate Polylines to clean that up. We'll select the polylines. It found four and it removed three duplicate line work entities. So now I just have the one polyline. If we run a list command and crossing window, there's only one entity there. So that's a nice little cleanup tool, also available as part of the file cleanup or drawing uh, cleanup found on the file menu here. Next, we want to take a quick look at remove polyline arcs. In part two, we looked at how to add arcs. So take a multi-segmented polyline and create an arc from that. In this segment, we're doing the opposite. We're going to remove the arc and this will create a segmented polyline you can use an offset method, which uses a mid-ordinate for each chord segment, and you specify that length. Or you can specify the length of the segments to represent the arc. We'll use the offset using 0.1. And now if we look at our arc, it's a segmented polyline. If we're getting ready to turn those into 3D, that can be important. Next, we'll look at how to remove polyline segments. There are two options here. We can break the polyline or keep it continuous. The thing to keep in mind is if we break the polyline, and let's pick a polyline to do this to. We're going to break it. If we remove the segment, we now have two polylines. On the other hand, if we take a polyline and tell it that we want it to remain continuous, what it will do is, when I remove this segment, it will average these two endpoints and bring them basically to the midpoint of this line. Even if I pick over here, it goes to the midpoint. So you have a continuous option or a break option. The continuous will average the endpoints of the segment removed. Lastly, we want to look at remove polyline vertex. Select the polyline, and you can see the blips. You simply pick near the vertex and it goes away. We'll zoom in and try this again. Pick our polyline. You can see the little blips. Pick a point near the vertex you want removed and remove it. So that takes us through the remove options duplicate polylines, removing the arcs, turning them into segmented polylines, removing polyline segments either by breaking the polyline or averaging the endpoints of the segment removed, and removing an individual polyline vertex. We now look at checking polylines. We can check the elevation range of our polylines. We enter a minimum elevation, in this case zero. Well, let's give it a maximum of say 100 feet. We select our polylines and it tells us that zero polylines are outside the elevation range. This is a way to check your data and make sure it's all uh, good data and you aren't dealing with points outside that valid range that you're going to be working in in your 3D data. Highlight non-perpendicular intersections. So if I have a polyline that's tying in to another polyline 
and then we'll draw a second polyline over here and this particular one will deliberately make perpendicular. This utility is verifying that these polylines are perpendicular. This is helpful when you're laying out road center lines and the goal is to have your intersections be perpendicular. This will identify where you have non-perpendicular T intersections. It does not identify non-perpendicular through intersections. Non-tangent polylines. Again, if we pick a polyline, it's going to point out all the locations that that polyline has non-tangent vertices. So if we run this again, and we'll pick this polyline, you'll notice this is tangent. Where we come out of the arc, it's not tangent. And where we have our bend, it's not tangent. This is, again, helpful when you're dealing with alignments because typically you want your curves and tangents, the tangents in and the tangents out, to be tangent to your curve. That's why we call them tangents, right? Highlight crossing polylines. Select your entities. It wants to know if we want to ignore zero. Generally, this would be true because we'd be dealing with break lines that we don't want to ignore, or that we do want to ignore zero. But in this case, I'm going to say no because I know all of my polylines are at zero. I have an option to display the resultant data. You can see these two polylines are crossing in the report formatter. I'll say no for now. And the minimum difference in elevation or delta z to report is zero. So it's telling me the x and y coordinate, the z coordinate for each line, and what the difference in elevation is. I can print this out and then use this report to find that location or, in this case, graphically it's clear enough, I can see where it is. Once I exit my report, I have an option to add polyline vertices at the intersections. Well, given that there's no elevation difference, I might as well go ahead and tell it to, yes, go ahead and add that. And in this case, we can average those because they're the same elevation. Uh, if you use the set option, it's going to set the 3D polyline to match the crossing contour. The idea being that the contour would be a 2D polyline to match. In this case, it doesn't matter which we do because they're at the same elevation. So now if we look at our polyline, we have a vertex in that polyline and we have a vertex in this polyline where they cross and we could create a surface model without getting errors. Going back to our polyline utilities, we've looked at all but the last one here, highlighting unclosed polylines. Number of places this can be helpful, but we'll just highlight this whole thing. And you'll notice everything except our circles is highlighted. Our circles are closed. The rest of these are not closed polylines. Close all the selected polylines. I can select individual polylines. If I do all of them, it's going to try and close all of these. But by saying selected, I can pick that one and close it. Pick this one and close it. Close that one. Close that one. Close that one. And now we have no a number of closed polylines in our data set. Closed polylines are used in a number of other Carlson routines, so it is helpful to know which ones are closed and which aren't. Things like inclusion boundaries, exclusion boundaries in surface modeling, and again in site net and takeoff, a number of functions there rely on closed polylines. So in final review, we looked at the remove polyline options, the check polylines, the elevation range for our polyline data, verifying they're perpendicular to at the t-intersections, finding non-tangent points on our polylines, highlighting crossing polylines prior to creating surface models and correcting those, and locating unclosed polylines. This concludes the series on Carlson's 2D polyline utilities. There are three parts. Be sure to check out the other two parts to make sure you have not missed any of the information on these wonderful tools. Thank you.